What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and in today's episode we're comparing the Home Ride Super Finish Max spray gun versus the Wagner Flexio 590. Let's get started. Okay, the first thing I want to say is this video is not sponsored by either of these products. Just want to throw that out there. I've owned both these guns for quite some time now, so I'm familiar with how they work and what I like and what I don't like about them, and I'll be mentioning stuff like that throughout the video. So basically, what I want to do is explain what this video, how it's going to be formatted. So I'm going to explain the parts of these guns, basically take them apart, put them together, show you how that works, and then we're going to be spraying some furniture. There's two nightstands that I got back here. I'm going to be painting one with the home right and the other with the Wagner and basically compare the process and we'll go from there. Okay, so these are the three main pieces that came with my Wagner Flexio 590. I'm gonna quickly go over each one individually. Okay, this is the main piece, basically what your nozzles will attach onto. So the air goes in through here and through the turbines. You have filters here that can be replaced. I probably should replace some soon. But anyways, your handle goes here, trigger, pretty simple. Main thing I'm gonna show you on here, you have this dial here. This one spins, it's your, it's called your X-Boost power dial. So this actually increases and lowers the air pressure coming out of your sprayer. So when I, whenever I use it, I honestly keep it around seven, but if I'm trying a new paint product, I just spin it until it, the paint comes out nicely. So, but when I spray furniture with water-based poly, it's always on seven. And usually when I'm spraying watered down paint, it's around seven as well. So I don't know. If you want to mess around with it and try different settings, go for it. And this gun came with two nozzles, unlike the home right. The home right only comes with one that's attached. These detach and connect on here with these little connectors here. I'll show you that. But this is the eye spray nozzle. I don't use this one anymore. It's made for walls, exterior walls and fences, basically large projects. So if you have something where you want to throw a lot of paint in and you want to cover a lot in less amount of time, this is your one. It's not for fine finishing though. So I'll quickly just show you it anyways. So this is basically this piece spins back and forth. This one is for wide spray and then skinny spray, I'll call. And uh, that just goes back and forth like that. The newer models have a very similar red dial. I'm pretty sure it's on top here. So basically it, it would just spin back and forth here. I could be wrong. But, um, and then same thing. So for changing your spray pattern, basically just this thing, the whole thing spins. Just, if you know spray guns, vertical spray and horizontal sprays. So we'll go over that too when we spray furniture. But just to show you that part right quickly, now we're throw that out of the way because I don't use it anymore. And we'll start talking about this guy. Okay, this is the detail finish nozzle. To quickly explain how it works, just I'll go over the parts very quick. So, as you can tell, this is the pin container down bottom, which is removable. That comes off. And then you have your, this is your suction tube. It spins for when the paint, basically if you're painting down, gravity will put the paint on the bottom of your container, so that spins to go down. Or if you're painting up, basically you want this back, so the gravity is taking the paint down, you want to be able to suck it up. Simple, that pops off. So basically that clicks into here. When you put it in, you want to make sure you press around just so it's airtight. And that's the suction tube and the container. Pretty simple. Onto the rest of the piece. So this is actually where your paint is coming out. You have your air caps here. So this spins. This changes your, your spray pattern. So you can go vertical or horizontal spray. I'll show you that soon when I spray some furniture. But basically for this gun, you twist this off. Oop. And this piece just comes right off. So this is actually where the paint is coming out of the gun, right at that tip. And this blue piece, all we gotta do, on there tighter than the other ones, and then it just comes off like that. So your paint is actually coming out around the white spray tip. It's just plastic. The home right has brass spray tips. You'll see that soon. But the paint comes out around that and comes out through that little tiny hole. 
And the last thing to mention on this spray gun, see the trigger here? So that comes back. You wanna know how much material flow is coming out of your gun? This part spins, so if it's all the way to the trigger, that means your trigger can come back further. But if it's spun counterclockwise all the way back, there's actually a part on your on the handle of the gun, so it'll be right here. Your trigger can't go as far back, so less material sprays out of the gun. So that's pretty much the detail finish nozzle on the Wagner. That's what I use when I spray paint. That's what I'll be using in this video. Okay, now it's time to go over the Home Right Super Finish Max Sprayer. So as you guys know, if you watch the channel, I already did a review and a full video on this gun, but I'm still gonna kind of go over it in this one anyways. So first thing I wanna say is, as you can tell, the difference between the Wagner and the Home Right, the Wagner has two spray nozzles that are removable and attachable. So here you can see the Home Right, the gun is actually attached to the nozzle. So the only thing you can remove is the paint container and the spray cap and spray adjustments and all that stuff up here. So let's get into it. Just like the Wagner, the paint container comes off, simple. And there is a suction tube underneath, which also spins and comes off. So basically the same exact concept as the Wagner. Okay, similar to the Wagner, the Home Right has a material flow dial here. The Wagner had it behind the trigger, but it works similar. So when you actually roll this to the minus and you roll this to the plus, so plus means more paint, minus means less paint obviously. But when you roll it to the plus, the trigger actually can come back further. But when you roll it all the way to the minus, the trigger doesn't go as far back. So it works in the same way, it's just a different different dial. Okay, let's move on to spray tip and the air caps and all that on the home right. So similar, it just spins off here, but also you have your air cap with the air ear, air cap ears, whatever you want to call them, that also spins, so that changes your spray pattern. But let's take this piece off just to show you what we're working with. That comes off. That just lifts off lightly. And then you have this spring piece that keeps everything tight. That comes off easily too. So the Home Right has the brass spray tips. So it actually comes with three different colors. There's a green, a red, and a blue. The green is what I actually use with furniture. It's made for, for chalk paints and other just regular paints. And I've been using it with poly as well and it works fine. So that's what I use for furniture, the green one. And then you have the red one, which is for thick primers and basically thick latex paints. Then you have the blue one, and the blue one is for stains and polyurethanes. So maybe I could try the blue one with poly, but it's been working with the green one, so why bother? So basically this can be removed. It comes with a little wrench, and you just take it off like this. Spins off, drop it a few times. This is actually just the spray tip. I don't know, I'll call it the, the spray tip cap. I don't know what it's actually called, but that's my guess. The spray tip cap. And then you add the actual spray tip that's connected completely to a metal rod that goes back. And this is how you remove this spray tip. You just do a little push with that and then it comes right off. So that's pretty much how the Home Right Super Finish Max comes apart. And then you, to put it back together, it's the same way. Throw this on, I just tighten it by hand. And give it a little tighten. I think the brass tip is really what's gonna give an advantage to the Home Right performance. And then on top, air cap. Spin this on, spin it tight. Suction tube, pop it in. Voila. Okay, I'm gonna get started on some prep work. If you wanna see how I prep and paint furniture, I have plenty of videos on that, so we're just gonna do this quickly. I remove the doors and then I clean up the entire piece. And then we sand down the tops because we are, we're not standing them, but we're tinting them with 
tinted poly and we sand the sides and the rest just so the paint adheres better. Now tape up the top to protect it. We're gonna use some white primer. And then when we're done that and everything's ready for paint, we're gonna throw a plastic drop cloth down because that prevents dust from shooting up on your project when using a sprayer. Okay, let's get the work in a Flexio 590 ready. I'm using bare paint that I have left over. It's pretty old stuff, but it'll work for this, for this tutorial. So let's get this ready. This paint container can hold 600 milliliters. That's the top line. So I'm gonna fill it up to 600, and then we're actually gonna put in uh, about 100 milliliters of water. So this is 60, but I won't fill it up all the way, and I'll put two of these in. So let's do that. With brand new cans, you usually don't have dirt and stuff on the edges of the can, but as you can see, old ones have like dried up paint clumps, and you do not want that going in your container because your gun will get clogged up and you won't be able to spray. So make sure you strain it before going in. This is just a strainer for, I think you put it at the bottom of your sink. I got it at the dollar store, but it works perfect. It's just these little tiny holes. So you just lay that over your paint container. I'm gonna start pouring paint in. I don't wanna make a mess, so give me a second. Yeah, look how thick this paint is. So we're definitely thinning this down. Okay, so we have about 600 milliliters in there. Let's put our first 50 to 60 milliliters in. And now stir it up. You really wanna make sure you stir it up or you're just gonna have water sitting on top of your paint and then you're just gonna be spraying thick paint and usually these guns can't handle that thick of paint so it doesn't spray out very well. I find the most issues I have when spraying with these guns is not watering my paint down enough. Okay, before we put this on our back on the nozzle, I like to just clean any paint off the edges just so we know this thing is gonna be airtight. Now since we're going to be spraying flat, it doesn't really matter which way our suction tube is, but I'll just keep it in the front like this. Make sure that it's completely in. If it's not in, you're going to have issues. So the Wagner Flexio 590 has a 6 foot cord, and the Home Right has a 20 inch cord. So you're probably going to need an extension cord, so I have two here that I always use when I'm spraying, just because you want that extra distance when you're moving around, you don't want your cord hitting your project. Okay, so now you just attach the nozzle to the actual gun. Pretty simple, put it in here at an angle. Pop it in. Now ready to go. Let's practice spray before we start spraying our furniture. And I'll show you all the settings. Okay, for the dial here for the X-Boost Power, I have it set on setting seven, in between seven and eight. For the material flow dial here, I have it closer to the back of the gun, so that means less. Less material is gonna be coming out of the gun. And then I have the spray pattern in the front here for the air cap. I just have it set horizontal right now, and that's gonna shoot a vertical spray. So let's get started. All right, let's start test spraying to make sure our paint sprays correctly. I don't mind this setting, I'm gonna have a little bit more paint come out. Just spin it probably half, half a spin. Okay, so, as you can see, I'll move in close and just focus it for a second. The gun is set on a horizontal spray pattern, so it's gonna shoot a vertical spray up and down. And that's better for going back and forth the project, just like this. But now if we spin it so the gun air cap is vertical like this, it's gonna shoot horizontally, and that's meant for going up and down a project, like this. So I feel the settings on the gun are good right now, so we're on seven to eight. 
low amount of product coming out of the gun and we'll just change the spray pattern as we go on the piece of furniture. Simple as that. Let's get started on painting furniture. Okay, now it's time to start spraying some furniture. I'm going to start from the top, go side to side, and go right to the bottom. And one tip when you start spraying, don't start in the middle. Always start off the corner. Not even on the corner, you're going to spray completely off. So any paint that spits out in, say, globs or whatever, is going to go flying not on your project. So, let's get started. Okay guys, the first coat is dry and pretty smooth, but you know what, whenever you paint furniture, the first coat always looks pretty bad, so let's move on to coat number two and see how the coverage turns out. Let's get started. Okay, so this is all I do when I clean out the Wagner. So, just pop the can open. Take your container off. Pour it right back in. Now we're gonna take this container, the nozzle, right to the sink, and we can clean it out. Okay, this is probably my favorite part about the Wagner. This is what makes it definitely stand out compared to the home right since I can take the full nozzle out and bring it right to the sink we're going to clean it right out in here okay so you can clean these out and then fill it with water and spray it to clean out the gun completely but since the nozzle is not attached you don't have to so I'm going to actually just remove all the attachments here and I'll clean out the inside of the gun in less than five minutes I have the complete gun ready to use again everything's clean so that is the major plus with the Wagner because you can take this off and just clean it in the sink without having to go spray it to clean it perfect Okay, we sprayed three coats with the Wagner, so now we're moving on to the home right. Let's get this gun set up. So the first thing is, let's take off the container. So the difference with the Wagner and the home right container is, since there's only one size with the home right, this holds 1,100 milliliters. The other one, the max line was 600. So I'm not gonna fill this one up all the way, but We'll go around center, so between 700 and 800, and we'll still put the same amount of water in ratio as we did with the Wagner. So let's start pouring some paint in here, get our strainer piece ready. You can tell that since we put a bit of water back into this can, it's a bit runnier than before. All right, we're about 800 milliliters, so a bit more than the Wagner was holding. So I'm going to put two of these in as well. We'll see how runny the paint is. And the second one is about just a bit more than half full because we want the ratio to paint to be pretty similar from the Wagner to the home right. So let's put the second one in. Look at the consistency that we had in the Wagner. It feels pretty similar to what we have here in the home right. 
All right, let's just throw our suction tube on. I'll just have it facing forward, just like we did in the Wagner. And also, make sure this one is pushed on. We want that tight as well. Okay, the paint is in, the container is on. Let's start practice spraying. As you can see, this cord is very short, 20 inches. So let's plug it in to our extension cord first. All right, and now we're ready to practice spray. So let's see if we can get this gun spraying good. Okay, so like I did in the other video with this, I start as low as the flow dial goes. And when you start like that, there's usually no paint coming out, but I just start shooting and then I roll the, the dial up until paint starts coming out until I get the right spray that I want. So let's do that. Okay, so this is spraying when the flow dial is all the way to the minus. So look, you can see no paint is gonna come out. We're just gonna roll the dial up towards the plus sign until we start to see paint coming out until we get the Spray that we like. I can already tell with the practice sprays that paint comes out of this gun just so much easier. So I remember my first thoughts with this gun that paint definitely sprays easier with the home right. So that's a plus and let's just keep practice spraying. Settings are pretty much set to the only way we can change anything is the flow dial. So. Then we can change our spray pattern right here when we want to. All right, so this part here on the nozzle where you can change the spray pattern. The best thing about the home right as well is that it clicks in on different settings. So this would make like a circle. This is your vertical spray, so for going up and down. And then this is your horizontal spray for going back and forth. So I'll just practice them a bit too. Horizontal setting, vert vertical spray for going back and forth. And I never use the circle one, it just, I don't know, I don't use it, so I'm just gonna skip it. And this is the vertical setting on the gun, but for shooting a horizontal line for going up and down. All right, these settings seem pretty good, so we're gonna get started on the furniture. I'm gonna be honest, I think this is gonna cover way better than the Wagner. So let's, let's get started and see what happens. Okay, so we just finished spraying the first coat here on this side. So I can tell already compared to the Wagner that this sprays paint easier. It comes out faster and the coverage just seems like it's going to be a lot easier with the home right so maybe that means we need to water down the paint more in the Wagner but I, I already I remember the first time I used this sprayer the paint just seemed to come out way easier than the Wagner so maybe it's that or maybe I was messing up the settings but hey if this one's easier to use and you don't have to mess around with the settings too much then maybe it's an easier gun to use but Let's keep going and see how this turns out. Okay, the tip when you're spraying, keep an eye on your spray tip because paint will accumulate right on the tip. And all I do is just wipe the paint off. So if you don't do that, you might have paint spitting up and you don't want that. So keep an eye on it. Okay, it's a little bit hard to see, but I did have a bit of paint dripping down because the home right spray is pretty thick amounts, so you gotta be careful with the dial. So I sprayed a tiny bit too much on this side, apparently, so I'm gonna sand it down. Just my 220 grit sanding sponge. So let's do that. All right, 
So the first thing we do when cleaning this gun is we empty the paint container back into the paint can. All right, let's take this container off and we're gonna clean it out. Now let's fill the container up with water. And now let's set the gun back up and we'll take it back out to the garage and we'll spray water through it. So now we have water in the container and I put the material flow dial up so we can have as much water coming out as possible. We're gonna spray it into your bucket and if you want you can spray this outside, it doesn't really matter but I sprayed into this bucket so I don't have to go outside. All right, let's spray it. Okay, so we still have dried up paint on the tip and stuff and just a bit of paint throughout. So we'll still take this to the sink with some warm water. We'll take the brush that it comes with and we'll just scrub everything clean. All right, let's go back. When you're removing your spray tip parts, make sure you close your drain in your sink because you could either lose your wrench down there or the spray tip parts will go down there. So just a little tip just in case. All right, so we'll take our brush, a bit of warm water, and we'll just scrub this inside and out. All right, so now it's cleaned. We can put it away and then we can clean the other part of the spray tip. There's actually not much paint on this part of the tip for whatever reason, but it's clean. So I'll actually run a bit of water through here and it'll come out through the where the paint comes out. Just don't submerge your turbine parts with the air filters and everything. So you don't want water going in through here, that'll just ruin the gun. But what I simply do is make sure that's away from it. And then I just Run some hot water through it. I just take the brush, all right, and now the gun is clean and it's ready for poly. So I'll get ready for that tomorrow. Okay, guys, we have three coats of paint on each nightstand, and now we're gonna be throwing on some water based polyurethane. I'm using Better thing uh, done in wood finish. This stuff has been working pretty good, so we're gonna thin it down 10% water. So let's start throwing it in these containers. Now I'll do the rest in here. Okay, now I'm gonna put a tiny bit of the paint color in, just a small amount. I like tinting it, and we're also tinting the top, because we're not staining. It's just gonna be tinted with the poly and a bit of the paint in it, so let's do that. Now it's time to thin the water-based poly. I like to thin it with 10% water, so we have about 450 in each, just over 450 in each one. So I'm gonna put 45 milliliters in each container and it should be good. So I have my water in this container. This is 60 milliliter measurement cup, but I won't fill it up all the way. I'll eye it and that should be good. Now, stir it up. Okay, I'm starting with the Wagner spraying poly. So I've sprayed poly many times with this sprayer. So the boost power dial is around on the seven area. Then your material flow is as low as it can go. And that's pretty much it. And I'll show you a few tips when we start spraying, but let's just test the spray to see how things are coming out of the gun. 
When you start spraying poly from the Wagner, it's going to spit a bit at the start, so you want to start on the outside of your project. So let me just show you. It'll spit up at the start, but then it'll spray good after that. So you can see here that it spit up a lot of poly, which would ruin your piece. So, and then it turns into a smooth spray. So spray off the corner of your project. Make sure you're not starting on your project anywhere or it's going to spit up like that. The Wagner does that, but I'm used to it. So make sure you're spraying this part on your project, not that. Okay, time to spread poly with the home right. So let's test spray right here. I'm gonna put the material flow dial down as low as it can go again and slowly make our way up because since we know this gun sprays out a lot more product at once, we should probably lower that as low as we can go. That seems pretty good there. One thing I also forgot to mention is when you increase your flow dial up on the home right, it actually increases the width of your, your spray. So it kind of doesn't work well because if you want a wider spray, you're going to have to have a thicker amount of product coming out at once. But it still works, you just got to spray a lot faster so you can keep it a bit skinnier with thinner material, which is good for poly, but also bad for poly because it's less material coming out but your spray is gonna take a lot longer. But if you put more material, you have a risk of drips going down. So you just gotta find a happy medium. I'm gonna keep it skinny for this one and just take my time and we'll go from there. The first coat of poly is done on both of them and they're both really smooth so didn't have any drip marks or anything so things are looking good. But I am going to do a switcheroonie on the home right. I'm going to throw, I'm going to try out the blue one just to let you guys know, see if it's any good and if it's better for spraying poly so let's throw that on. Okay, I've got the blue spray tip in now, so let's see how it sprays with the water-based poly. Okay, so with the blue tip in, I find the spray is pretty similar. The only difference is it might spray a bit thinner, so that'll help when you're trying to get that water spray for spraying poly, so not much difference, but it might help spray it thinner so your poly doesn't drip. So let's try it out. Okay, we are done spraying, so now let's do a little review of the process. So let's first talk about the painting process. When it comes down to both of these guns, I think spraying paint was a lot easier with the home right, but I think we got a smoother finish with the Wagner because it doesn't spray as much at a time. And when we were spraying the home right, it sprays a lot of paint, so I probably should have lowered the dial a bit because we did have almost like a, a like so much paint it was almost causing like bumpy surface, almost like a roller kind of look. But yeah, for the painting process, I think easier with the home right, 
the Wagner in this project had a smoother finish, but realistically, both of these sprayers, you can get a smooth painted finish. So, pretty even on the painting process. This one, the Home Right Wings being easier. Okay, now let's talk about the process of spraying water-based poly out of these sprayers. When it comes down to it, I have to say the Wagner is a lot easier. The spray pattern, the water spray, and being able to make the flow dial, the material flow dial a lot lower, makes it a much faster process. The Home right is it's good, you can get a good finish, and I, I got both, like both of these sprayers produced a great finish without any drips, but the thing is this one was a lot slower. When it comes to the cleaning process to both these sprayers, I think the Wagner wins hands down. It's faster and easier. You just, you can pop the nozzle off the sprayer itself and just soak it in the sink and use the brush to clean out the entire gun and you're done in less than five minutes. With the home right, you can't remove the nozzle, so it kind of slows down the process and you should, what you need to do is take water, fill it up, and well clean it first and then fill it up with water and then spray it. So it takes a bit more time and the the brass spray tips also slow your cleaning, your cleaning process down. So I think this takes longer to clean, this is a lot faster to clean. When it comes down to it, I think both of these sprayers are good. I can't really say one is better than the other. They have the pros and cons to both of them. Like, it's just hard to say what I would pick. But if you're a beginner and you just want to get started with a spray gun, I think the Home Right is just an easier overall sprayer to use. I think the Flexio has a few more adjustments going on and I feel like it might be harder to use. I can't really tell now because I've used it so much, but I feel like the home right is just an easier sprayer to pick up, throw some paint in it, and start painting a project. When it comes to speed and efficiency, I will choose the Wagner hands down. It's so much faster to clean. I can throw poly in it a lot faster. The, the container's smaller, which I like. So, you know, it's it's hard to say which one's better. They both they both get the job done. And as we know, our night stands, you can. You can look at them and you can't tell that they've been sprayed by two different sprayers, so... Realistically, you can't go wrong with either of these guns. Whatever you want to pick out, you go for it. Finally, here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the two end tables, but you can't really tell they were sprayed with different sprayers on video. These photos kind of show that the home right has a little bit of a bumpy surface to its finish. The Wagner looks pretty smooth for the most part. Up here on the top left on the home right, you can see a bit of bumpiness on the home right as well. And just take a look at these photos just to get a comparison. Anyways, I hope you guys found what you were looking for. And I hope this video helped you kind of show the differences between these two sprayers. And hopefully I made your decision a little bit easier. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Thanks for watching everybody.